Hey y'all, how are y'all doing? Alright, so it's going to be Colossians 3, 1 through 17. Alright. Lord Jesus, I come to you and I lift up the viewers, Lord God. Please give them ears to hear, a heart to receive, and eyes to see. And place a strong edge of protection over them and their loved ones. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. <clears throat> okay, so it's going to be Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ is our, when Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desires, and covetedness, which, idol which is idolatry. Because of the things the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you, you yourselves once walked when you lived in them, but now you yourselves are to put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcised nor uncircumcised barbarian Scythian slave nor free that Christ is in all and Christ is all and in all. <clears throat> Alright, so when when you convert over to Christ, you are a new creation in Christ. A lot of people can't fathom that, we see past that. You are a new creation. You see different, you hear different, you feel different, you perceive different. It's just how it is when you have the Spirit of God in you, okay? And um and so these things, like if you have the Spirit of God in you, you know. And one way you know is the Holy Spirit, like if you feel a tugging, like like say you're doing something and it's like you know that you know you know that it's not good for you. That's the Holy Spirit trying to work with you to get you out of the situation and to get you on more uh, fertile and solid ground. We all go through things, okay? It's not about perfection. No act of righteousness can get us to heaven. That's why Christ was sent. You know, because we just, we're, we're just, we're just, we're human right now. We are in a human body, though we die to our old self. If you have, if you have witnessed Christ, then you know exactly what I'm talking about, alright? When you converted over, you started seeing, feeling, hearing different. Now, you might still have some issues. We're always learning. We're always being worked on. Christ is amazing. That's why God sent His Son. Because He saw, no matter how hard we tried, we just kept failing because the enemy has a strong place in this world. But don't get it twisted, all right? The children of God are protected. God, if the, if the enemy brings something in your path, it's through God's approval, period. God don't tempt you. People like to say, oh God, no, God don't tempt you. God don't feed you drugs. If you're out in the streets and you're finding money for your drugs, that's not God. That's the enemy working against you, making you think it's God, but it's not God. It's called trickery, but we all have um, at different times, like when we really, like I don't know how to, you know, 
the Holy Spirit works with us all differently. So I can't sit there and necessarily tell you how Christ is working in your life. You have to figure that out. And not in here, but I can do my best to help inspire you, to help lift you up, to help encourage you, and help tell you about the good news of Christ. But the Bible itself says, study to show thyself approved. So if you are a Christian, or if you become a Christian, and you want to do right, it is very important that you open the Word of God for yourself, and you read it, because you're watering it's, it's like a watering effect, like a plant. It grows when the time is right. Yeah. And you, there is a lot of people out there, and they just kind of, life is tough. It's tough. It's really tough. And then, you know, and it is tough to get rid of people, places, and things. I understand. But there comes a point where you really need to evaluate yourself and go to God. Have God evaluate you. David did it. He was like, if there was anything in my, uh, I can't remember word for word, but David was like, search me out, God. If there was anything in my heart that is not of you, get rid of it. And that's not always the easiest process. We're going to go through things. And it's not going to be comfortable. It's because we're getting rid of the old and we're making way for the new. The new is great. You'll look back and you'll be like, man, I'm glad I finally listened. I'm glad I did that. And you'll sit back and nobody is on a pedestal. But we sit in the heavenlies. And when we decide to put our mind, let go of our mind, let go of our ego. And we sit with Christ consciousness, so to speak. Nobody's better than nobody, but you will start seeing things. And you'll be like, how did I not even notice that? But then you realize that you were fighting against it because you refuse to see it for its true light. And, and you have to pray. You, you need to pray for the things that are behind because it's really sad. It's a very sad thing. A lot of us, uh, people, they don't know what they're doing. If they knew, they wouldn't be doing it. They, they, they hand themselves over to the enemy. And it's really sad. And we need to pray for them. Because some of them, they're on the inside screaming out. Because they don't want to be there. But they allow the enemy to overpower them. But in the, might, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the enemy cannot have them. Because what belongs to the Lord belongs to the Lord. Nothing can breach that system in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It ends up having to fall off. But it is a struggle. Especially when you put yourself in there. But what? But no man and nothing can pluck what is the Lord's from his hands. Period. Let me show you something. Go to John 15. Jesus says, it's a red letter, John 15. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already cleaned because of the world which I have spoken to you. The, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. So when you think of a fruit tree, you're a fruit of Jesus Christ. He's the vine that you hang on. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch, and is withered, 
and they gather them and throw them into the fire, Ustarandos Casino, Ustalain, Ustalain Faisain, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you can bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. So, yeah. Alright, let's see. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. That's why we don't manifest of the world. God gets none of the glory. And if God don't get none of the glory, it ain't good. It's bad fruit. He done said it. It's going to be pruned, and it's going to be thrown in the fire, and it's going to be burned. Because that's how it is. We don't manifest nothing. Christ gives. Jesus Christ is the true secret. And then it over in Colossians. Let's see. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. So, there's something about a child of God, and I know right now, it's it's really rocky for a lot of people. And child of God, understand that sometimes we convert over, and then we might go and mess up. But it was always a part of the plan. Because God sees all in Christ... And, uh, God in Christ, they see all, they know all. They, there is no plan, when it comes to Jesus Christ, there's no plan A, there's no plan B, there's no plan C. There's only the will of God. And He knew everything that you were going to do before you did it. He knew how to get you out of there. And He also knew that you thought you weren't going to be able to get out and that you would be thinking that you're going crazy, but you're not. That is a lie of the enemy. When you start thinking that you're going crazy, that's how you know changes seriously need to be made in the name of Jesus. It's a sign to know. Because when we walk with Christ, when we walk in the heavenlies and with the heavenlies, so to speak, it's a different world. Like I said, we're not on a pedestal, but you will sit back and you'll see, you'll observe. And you'll be like, wow, thank you, God. Thank you. Not to say that you won't run into trouble, but you're more grounded. And you know that no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus. You'll also know that when shots are fired towards the children of God, they return back to sender. They just can't they just can't shoot on the child of God. You're safe. And we need to start acting like it. We need to start believing. We need to start getting rid. Like letting all this stuff fall off of us, it's not of God. When you are stressed, when you are depressed, when you are anxious, not zealous, but anxious. But you have to be careful with zeal because the enemy can kind of twist it. Um, it, it all depends on where you're walking, where you're stepping, because we can walk into the enemy zone. He can't get in, he can't have us. But when we walk into his places, he can influence us. And one sign of that is, is you feel like you're going crazy. It's because you're an empath, you can feel. 
and you need to remove yourself. When you start feeling like that, you need to get away from those people. They're not of God. And if they, they're not of God. Yet. You have no business with them. Because you are royalty. You sit in high places, but you're not better than nobody. That's why you can't fit in. You don't want to fit in. People don't accept you because you're different. And that's okay. You don't want to fit in that with them. Where they're going is dead. You're going to life. And we sit in heavenly protected royalty places and we're highly protected. And that's you. That's your home. That's where you belong. And that's where you're going to go. So start doing what you have to. If you need to clean, clean. Even if it sucks. Like, <laughs> I need to clean too. Just being honest. And if you need to reorganize, reorganize. The enemy loves chaos. Because it makes you go chaotic. I want you to under understand, okay, I grew up with a hoarder. I grew up in that kind of home. And the mentality in that kind of home is chaotic. It's because it's not of God. It's not hating on nobody. Some people legitly need help taking care of themselves. And you don't ever, ever walk into somebody's home and notice their mess. When you walk into somebody's home, you don't make them feel worse than what they already feel. You make them feel like you don't even see it because you don't see it. You see God in there because you stepped in the room. Now God's there. You're not God, but you carry the spirit of God. So when you walk into somewhere, you don't make somebody feel bad. The enemy does that. You're bringing the light into somewhere that's tormenting somebody. So you be of assistance. Alright? Because the enemy likes to torment through that kind of stuff. I have to, I'm not no, and you do not want to be OCD. OCD is not good. Period. People are like, oh, my stuff's so clean. No, you're OCD, and you are a different type of crazy. No offense. You have a different type of crazy spirit surrounding you that is just as bad as a hoarder. I think worse. Because a hoarder can understand not to walk into somebody's home and judge them. While somebody that's OCD walks in somebody's home and they get... And the person's home that it is, they make them feel like crap. Just being honest. I wouldn't want to be a no OCD person. And clean is good, but going crazy is bad. I wouldn't want that. That's why I don't got that. But I just want you to know that you are protected. And like I was saying with it, I'm not I'm not hating because I'm not the cleanest person. Like, I need to clean my table right now. You know what I mean? But God has showed me that, um, that, okay, so like where I live, right? I have my children and we have a home. Praise God. I'm very thankful. But it is a smaller area for right now. So it gets cluttered really quick. And I don't want my children go without so I can feel okay. And so... I can be comfortable and have a clean home all the time. That's ridiculous. Let your children be children. You are destroying their childhood when they're not allowed to be children. But they do need a clean. Because you're destroying their adulthood if you don't teach them how to do those things. So just remember that. But there's a balance with it, you know. But for me, God opened my eyes. And he helps me to see that, like, when I walk out, like, and, and I'll do, and, and ladies and men that have children, it's okay. Just, there's a fine line between abuse. But my kids, like, I will tell my kids, I'm not being mean, 
that I need everybody to be quiet. We need to clean. Then we can talk. Mommy has a lot going on. This is too much for Mommy. And I'm not being mean, but I need your guys' help. We're a team. Let's get this put together. And then when we're out in the sewer, my kids have a rule, a new rule. I'll ask my kids, what is that rule? Like, we don't talk in the store. That's right. Because I have a whole entourage. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, and when I go into the store, we're going into the store. We're not going in the store to hang out. We're not going in the store to win the shop. We are going in the store to get what we need and get out. Okay? We go in, we get what we need, and we get out. And my children, I, I'll tell them, they know, they know mommy's not being me. Be like, what is the role in the store? Do not speak. And I'll straight up tell my children, if you speak, when we get home, I'm going to pop you. They know. Spare the rod, spoil the child. There is nothing wrong with that. That is, that, that is our religious practice. Spare the rod, spoil the child. But there is a fine line between abuse and, and disciplining your child. God disciplines us healthy. The enemy disciplines us bad. You don't beat on your kid. You don't do that. And that's why my kids know. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I tell you that, maybe I'll help you. Because um, I used to beat myself up for the longest time as a mother. But inviting in Christ has showed me, you don't listen to other people. Like, for me too. Don't, just because I'm telling you how I raise my kids, you have a whole different crew. You need to learn how to raise your kids properly. What works for them, what does not work for them, what works for you, what does not work for me. What works for me, like when I get, because... I noticed God made me aware that when my home is a wreck, I'm a wreck on the inside. Not completely uh, in my mind or ego-wise. I'm a wreck. And it, it'll make you spin, man. So I just tell you that to help you. Maybe, you know, and no judgment or nothing like that. But maybe that might help you. Like like I said, I, I know I'm going to clean today. Like we cleaned yesterday. And don't overdo it. We cleaned yesterday. And like I cleaned the kitchen. I was like, I saw, I, I did the fridge right on I was like, man, so you still need to be clean. <sighs> I ain't beating myself up. I'm going to do that tomorrow. And I ain't stressing myself out in the middle of cleaning either. I am not Cinderella. I'm a queen. Cinderella was a very abused woman that turned into a queen. Okay? So are you. Own it. Know it and own it. And when you clean, don't be stressed out. Like, oh, there, oh, this needs done now. You know, because like me, I'm a multitasker too. And so I can actually do multiple things, but it's important that those things get finished. You know? So, but I'm fixing to go, but hopefully that helps you somehow. I just felt led to tell y'all about that. So, hopefully that helps you. Don't beat yourself up. Abide in Christ. And just know, like, I'm not saying, I, I fornicated for four years. Almost four years. And I felt it. It wasn't a fun feeling. But I've never been the one, maybe you're the same way. I've never been the one, we're all adults here, to have sex and enjoy it. It's never been me. Because I knew that I was never with the right one. Eh. Yeah, no. I enjoyed being embraced. But the actual acts, if I was intoxicated, I enjoyed it. Because I had a false mentality. You know what I mean? But sober? To be honest with you, I don't think I've ever really... I've never cared to be with anybody sober. I mean, it seems like I was with one guy. Yeah, and we were sober, but... 
that I was happy. And that's truth. Thought I was the first time. And realized, nah. Because you're not it. And especially women. It takes a while to find that person. And you are such a good woman. And I feel for you. I know the pain. I know the pain when you're in a relationship and you want out, but you just can't do it, whether it's yourself making you believe, it's not yourself, the energy is making you believe you can't live without them. I had, I'm probably going to cut this video off and maybe may finish a testimony, but when I've, I've been a mother since I was 16, I've always had multiple children. And I could never see myself taking. And I wasn't raised like that. I was. I wasn't raised. I was. I wasn't raised to be to be an independent woman and to take care of m me and myself and my kids. Now it's not taking talking any bad on the person I was with. They weren't able to work literally. But I was. So I was raised a different type of way. And my calling was not to raise a sick child. So I'm totally different. But I was raised in that. So it, it was a struggle, you know, to really understand how to function, things to do in life. Late bloomer, thankful late bloomer, because everything that we go through makes us into a better person, helps us to realize who we really are in Christ and how to help other people. You need to be proud of yourself. A lot of people submit to what they went through and they sit there and instead of using the gift to help other people like the gift of empathy, they use it to attack and take from others. But you have chosen to use your struggle to find out how to do better and to help. And we are so proud of you. And we know it's not easy. That's why we're here for you. God is always there for you. But he loves you so much, he puts others in your path. It might be a little hard to really pinpoint them at first. And that's because of what the world has done to you. It's not your fault. And we understand. And we love you. And we're so proud of you. Alright, women, we need to keep our head wrapped. I hate wrapping my head at night time, y'all, but... I knew I should have wrapped it last night. Try to have the devil breach system. If they can do that. Do a dream state. But you're protected in dream state. And there's a message whether they think they're giving you. You know what I'm saying? Like I got people in my dream coming to my dream last night touching on me. Do not let nobody touch on your body. Don't let nobody in your home. They were placed outside my home. Don't chill with people. That you know you shouldn't be. Do not let them put their, your, their hands on your body. That is your body. It's Christ, but Christ is having you with it for the moment. Okay? Don't let nobody touch your body. You don't want their nasty. Period. You don't want their nasty on you. Because it's nasty. Right? I'm not talking just about sexually. That's disgusting. That's not nasty, that's disgusting. Unless you're married, then it's holy, it's sacred, and it's God is like in the midst of it, and it's a beautiful thing. Alright? But yeah, I don't want nobody to touch your body. That's yours. You don't want their nasty heebie jeebie little nasty little hands on you. You can be O C D in that department. Just don't be mean to people. But <laughs> you gotta learn the balance of like my animal. Nobody's allowed to touch my dog no more. My dog bites. She did not like that. And I knew it. So what belongs to you, don't let people touch. You held on this long, so I know this, you know, this is for you. Don't let people touch your belongings. Do not receive. If, or I can't tell you what to do. Be very discerning and careful. Who you let in your home. Things that people want to give you. Even if it's food. And items that you receive. Be very discerning. Alright. 
The enemy cannot have you. But the enemy wants to lower your frequency because the enemy don't want you. The enemy wants you. Everybody else wants your blessings. But they're not allowed to have them. And it won't happen. But just be advised to make it more easier on yourself and that way you'll stop wondering like why you're freaking out, what's going on. Stand your ground, stand up for yourself. There's nothing wrong with that, but be humble with it. No, you are not better than your body. You're good. And I love you. And you're beautiful. Right? Beautiful. And there's certain people that's trying to come in your dreams. They like seeing. They're bad. Love you.